it's been many years since I wore my glasses on camera like this. Um, and when I used to wear them, I didn't wear lipstick. So I didn't think they don't match. Also, you can see my reflectors in my glasses, but whatever, doesn't matter. Let's vlog. Today I want to do a very loose, unscripted vlog about digital arts and how I got into it, how I found it. Looking back, I'm aware that when I was growing up I was constantly surrounded by graphic design, advertising, art, digital arts, um, but whilst I was growing up I didn't really notice it. Not really. I mean, I saw digital arts and I appreciated it as art, um, but it wasn't something that I felt I could do. When I was at school, the only form of art that was really appreciated was physical painting, physical art. When I was studying art in my early teens, then GCSE, A-level, throughout that period, they never introduced us to Photoshop or any form of digital creation. Even things like textiles weren't really appreciated. If you wanted to do um, sculpture, textile, stuff like that, you took textiles. That was not a part of art. As somebody that's never been good at working with my hands, like sculpting, stuff like that, um, I didn't really worry about that too much, but I know that irritated lots of kids that were growing up with me. So I was quite lucky in that way. Art was sort of catered to what I was good at, or was able to make myself good at to get the A-stars. I think the only form of graphic design I had in school was CDT. Um, we had to design various uh, peculiar things like pens and pots in this very complicated program that was very elongated and boring and we had very boring teachers. So that kind of put me off, I think. In 2007 or 8, uh, my parents gave me this for my birthday or Christmas. Um, and unfortunately, although I had this, I didn't really have the software to be able to use it to its full potential. It's been so long now that I can't remember the name of the program, but there was something that I used to create these sorts of images. I loved tracing round photographs. I think this was probably one of my first tablets creations. Um, as you can see, it's very limited. There aren't many different styles of brushes. Um, I mean, it's okay, but it's not as good as I feel that I could do now. I think the most I ever used it for was rotoscoping with clone photos. When I was younger, I used to do lots of cloning photos where I would multiply myself on the screen. Um, these are some of my more intricate cloning photos. But when I started, the only programs I had was a very bad plugin in Windows Movie Maker from 2005, um, or I would put photos into PowerPoint and just crop them down the middle so they had massive crop lines, um, or I would put sections of the photos into paint and crop around them, rotoscoping. So I was sort of using paint as my Photoshop just many, many years before I got my hands on Photoshop. There used to be a feature on Bebo called The Wall, um, where you could paint messages, a bit like uh, paint on Microsoft Word, um, and we used to paint uh, images for our friends, and I did do a couple of pieces in there, but this was with a tiny trackpad mouse, um, so it was quite difficult. The first time I remember using Photoshop was when I was 16 and I started college. I took art and photography, so the photography classes had Photoshop on the computers, and my mind was blown. Suddenly I could do all these um, clone photos, all these photos I'd taken over many, many years, I could suddenly edit together in the way that I'd envisioned as a teenager. So that initial um, Photoshop experimentation, I was just so excited. But even then, Photoshop was more for photography, it wasn't for art. I didn't see the possibilities with painting and creating. I did do some digital photography where I distorted images and stuff like that, um, but not quite in the same way I'm thinking about arts and painting, stuff like that. Even in the art lessons at college, uh, digital art was sort of frowned upon. If you wanted to do digital art, you should have taken graphic design. That was the message I sort of got. So basically what I'm trying to say is, during my childhood, um, digital arts wasn't praised, it wasn't encouraged, and it wasn't accessible. When I got to university, again, it was a very traditional-based course. It sort of prided itself on old-fashioned mediums, so ink, printing, um, clay, uh, various forms of sculpture, which I absolutely hated. But throughout my first year, there was no mention of digital arts at all. And it was so frustrating for me at the time because everything was just so old-fashioned and physical. Um, and I was very into film and photography and that's a very digital medium. It can still be art, but it wasn't quite the art that university wanted. 
I know I'm really summarising my art experience at university, I will have to come back to this in more depth. Um, but yeah, I walked out. And subsequently, I didn't pick up a paintbrush for two years. I boycotted art. That's how upset university made me. And during those two years, my mind was on film school, so creating videos and YouTube and editing, stuff like that. Um, so not quite painting and digital arts. Um, digital art really only made a massive impact on my life in the last year or so. It was literally only when I started this channel that I suddenly had this new appreciation for digital art and my mind was open to the possibilities of what digital art could do and how accessible it was. Yes, my version of Photoshop is eight years old, but it has the possibility to do some of the stuff that I've been thinking of. I was so frustrated last year that I had that ability and I just, I just didn't do anything with it because I didn't know. It really does frustrate me now because as a 24 year old who has done film and arts, fine arts I suppose, um, I'm now aware of so many different pathways and digital stuff that I was not aware of when I was 16. I think I missed a trick there. I'm annoyed. I really, really am annoyed. I think if I had my chance again, I would love to go back and do fine arts and illustration simultaneously, if I could. And as a graduate who's gone back on herself and gone back to arts, and sort of stepping into the world of digital arts, I feel a bit lost and overwhelmed, but it's something I've got to take on board. It's very weird to me, as I've been vlogging this, I kind of feel like a uh, elderly lady reflecting on life. This is what it was like when I was growing up, and this is why I paint the way I paint, because that's how I was taught, um, and that's what was accessible. It's so weird. I hope this has made sense, what I've said. I've been talking for about half an hour, so whatever you see is highly edited. And yes, this is my cat.